Well, I want to give you a riddle now. Who's the oldest man in the Bible? Methuselah. Good for you. He lived 969. Well, yet he died before his father. How can he be the oldest man in the Bible, and yet he died before his father? That's your, little, that's your question for your small group meeting this week. Ask him. And, of course, what everybody forgets who his father was, his father was Enoch, who didn't die. He was translated. In fact, when Enoch was 65, something happened that from that point on he walked with God for three, uh, over 300 years. He apparently was given a prophet. See, the, the flood of Noah did not come as a surprise. It had been preached on for four generations. But Enoch was told when his son was born that as long as his son is alive, the flood would be with the judgment of the flood would be withheld. So he named him Methuselah, which comes from two Hebrew roots. Muth, which means his death, it occurs 125 times in the Old Testament, and the verb shalak, which means to bring or send forth. Methuselah really means his death shall bring. In fact, if you do your homework in Genesis 5, you'll discover that Methuselah. Uh, was born, and when he was 187, Lamech was born, and when he was 182, Noah was born, and it was the 600th year of Noah that the flood came, and if you do your math here, you'll discover the year that Methuselah dies is indeed the year the flood come. I always ponder this. Can you girls imagine what it was like raising that kid? Every time he caught a cold, the entire neighborhood would probably panic. But in any case, if there's all this significance hidden behind the name Methuselah, what about the other ten names in this genealogy in the book of Genesis from Adam to Noah? We have uh, Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalalel, Yared, Enoch, Methuselah, and Lamech, and Noah. The problem with these names is they're not translated in your Bible. If you have a lexicon, it doesn't translate proper names. And um, the way you have to uh, unravel these is to get into the Hebrew roots and find out what the, the, the words mean. And since we learned so much from Methuselah, let's take a look at these others. What does the word Adam mean? Well, man, that's a reasonable good. Adama means man. His son was named Seth. And Seth comes from a root which means appointed. In fact, in Genesis 4, verse 25, Eve said when he was born, that God hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel whom Cain slew. So the word Seth, she even tells us, implies appointed. Seth has a son by the name of Enosh, which means mortal, frail, or miserable. It comes from the root anash, which is to be incurable, like a wound or a grief or wickedness or what have you. It really means incurable. Kenan is, uh, means sorrow, dirge, or elegy. And uh, his son is Mahalalel. Now, he's probably had enough, because he and his father is named, uh, you know, miserable and so, and so forth. So he decides to end all that. He names his son when he's born Mahalalel. That's a mouthful, but it's a great name. It comes from two roots. Mahal, which means the blessed or praised one, and El, the name of God. Mahalal El. Mahalalel means the blessed or praised God, or blessed God. He has a son by the name of Yared, which is a verb. The verb Yarad, meaning he shall come down, and I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, Enoch, we've mentioned already, but what does his name mean? It's an academic term. It means commencement or teaching. And Methuselah, we talked about, means uh, from Muth and Shalak, uh, uh, means his death shall bring. And as I pointed out, it, it was, that was the year the flood came when he died. His son is Lamech. And here's a root that we use in the English. It's still evident in lament or lamentation. It really comes from a root meaning despairing. And Lamech has a son by the name of Noah. How many of you have heard of Noah before? That's about 70%. Not bad. Okay, I'm kidding. All right. But we use the name. But what does it mean? Well, Lamech explains. It comes from Nacham, which means to bring relief or comfort. Uh, Lamech even mentions that when Noah is born, that he shall comfort us and so forth. He explains it. You can draw these even from the text itself. Well, now let's take a look at this genealogy, with this, having had this little Hebrew lesson. And we have Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalalel, Yared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. Let's read it in English. Man, the pointed, mortal, sorrow. The blessed God shall come down, teaching. That his death, whose death? God's death, shall bring the despairing comfort or rest. Every time I do this, I get goosebumps. Here is what you, a reasonable summary of the Christian gospel tucked away in the early chapters of Genesis. 
Now this has several implications. First of all, it's clear that, uh, well, let's put it this way. You can never convince me that a group of Jewish rabbis contrived to hide the Christian gospel in a genealogy in the Torah. No way. 